Welcome to the first video of my home makeover series. When I decided that I was going to be renovating this house and I wanted to create a series of this on YouTube, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to create the videos. So what I've decided to do is go through and create episodes. Most of the episodes are going to be based around certain room transformations, but there's also going to be videos in between where I do things that go across the whole house or little things that we're doing as part of the renovation that are not involved in a particular room makeover. In this first video, we're going to be going through and painting all of the wooden trim in the house and all of the doors. Now, I know that I'm gonna get a little bit of a pushback here and a lot of people probably down in the comments telling me that I shouldn't be painting the wooden trim because so many people love wood. But in this home, I personally just found the wood was really dating the look and feel of the home. In certain homes, it creates so much character and it really suits the home. But in this particular home, it is just a modern three bedroom home and the wooden trim is really dating the house and making it feel a little bit cold. So what I'm gonna be doing is going through and painting the wood trim everywhere and I'll show you the before and after and let you decide whether you think having all white trim makes a difference to the feel of this home. Before I dive into showing you the process of painting all of this wooden trim, I just wanted to talk through you the process and what products I've chosen to use and why it is that I've done that. So ordinarily, if I was going to be painting this wood like I would when I refinish furniture, I would go through and do a scuff sand of everything. But in this instance, we've removed all the old flooring and the carpet strip is still there up next to the skirting boards. And that's gonna make it really difficult to try and get in there and scuff sand. So what I'm gonna be doing is cleaning out all of the skirting boards with a degreaser, making sure that there is no soap scum, grime, mold, anything like that down there on those skirting boards. I'm then going to go back over it and clean it again with water to make sure that there's no residue of a degreaser that's going to stop the paint from sticking. And then I'm going to apply a primer. Now I'm going to paint the primer on everywhere and then I'm going to apply three coats of paint. I personally chose to use an enamel white paint for this and I am going to be using that because that's my personal preference as to what to use. But there are so many great products that you can use. Now there's a water-based enamel and an oil-based enamel and the oil-based enamel can yellow a little bit over time, but it's really up to you as to which product it is that you choose to use. So let's dive into it and let me actually show you how it is that I'm going to do this. So as I mentioned in the first video, this home had been previously tenanted and it was so dirty everywhere. So what I had to do is get one of these scrubbers and I had to go in to all of these window frames and scrub out all of the build up. There was dirt, mold, grime, everything. It was so disgusting all throughout the windows. So it did actually take me quite a long time to go through with mold cleaner and window cleaner and clean out all of the grooves in the windows. Because quite a lot of this space is not going to be able to be scuff sanded, the cleaning component is definitely one of the most important parts of the whole process. These windows are actually one of my favorite parts of the house and I love the look and the feel of them. They give me a bit of a colonial vibe, but I had to go through and clean all of the little grooves so that I could give them the attention they deserve and really make them stand out. So I just wanted to show you up close what I did with the uh, trim and the skirting. So all I did was grab my scrubber and I went along and scrubbed all of those little grooves with the scrubber before going back in with a cloth and just wiping that all down and clean. Now this is a degreaser that I'm using here to scrub off all of the grime that's built up on these. Once all the skirting had dried and the window seals, it was then time to get out the paintbrush. So I'm going to paint on a primer. So I'm just painting on the primer everywhere with a paintbrush, just carefully going around and cutting it in. If you don't have a lot of experience cutting in it, you may want to use masking tape and masking tape around all the outside of the frame and then also on the window frame, just to make sure you don't get a lot of paint on your window frame. You could use a mini roller on the large flat component of the windowsill if you wanted to. I'm just using the paintbrush to paint all of it because as I cut in up against the edge, there's really not a lot of extra surface that needs to be painted. And I find it just easier while I've got the paintbrush out to go along and just paint all of that with the paintbrush. I'm 
just going to take the primer and work my way around room by room in each component of the house, painting that on everywhere. Now I moved on to patching some holes in the wall. So we had the plumber in to remove the old heater because there was an old gas heater here which was no longer really working very well and we just decided to decommission it and have the plumber come in and remove it entirely because there is a reverse cycle electric split system, a heating and cooling system in the home. So I cut a piece of plaster down to size and then screw that onto the wall and now I needed to mix up the base coat of the plaster. I just mixed the base coat in with water until it got to a reasonably thick consistency and then I was ready to apply it onto the wall. When you finish mixing it you want it to be a paste like consistency and then you're ready to start applying it. You want to apply plenty of the base coat to make sure you thoroughly cover the holes. However, you don't want to have too much because it is quite difficult to sand off and so you don't want it to be thick and chunky. You want to just have a nice smooth edge there when you've finished applying that base coat. I'd also removed the old shelves from inside the walk-in robe and they were so difficult to get out. They were the most awkward construction and I actually ended up ripping quite a lot of holes in the plaster in order to get those shelves out of the wall. And I'm just applying the base coat through all of these holes throughout the walk-in robe as well. I let the base coat sit for 24 hours before I applied the top coat and then I came back in and applied the top coat over the top of that to get a nice smooth flush finish. I've come back at it for day two of painting on the primer. I've got a little ice cream container of primer and I'm just going through with my paintbrush and applying that to all of the spaces where I have this wooden trim. In this super speedy video of the hallway space, you'll be able to get a feel for how painting this all white changes the feel of the space. This is quite a small space and it's quite compact and even just painting all of this trim white in this one space is really brightening up the space as I go. Once I'd finished all the primer and that had dried, it was time to come back in for another day of painting, this time with my enamel gloss. So I picked a semi-gloss paint because I wanted to have a bit of a shine to all of this trim and I'm now just going to go over the top of the primer and paint this semi-gloss on everywhere throughout the house. Now it was time to move on to the doors. Now these doors were a previously painted surface, so I had to do a little bit of a different preparation when it comes to these. 
So what I did do is I took all of the doors off and I did give them all a deep clean and then a really good scuff sand with my orbital sander. And then once I had given them all a scuff sand, I cleaned them again and then it was time to apply the paint. For the doors, I did choose to use a roller because a door, you can't really paint with a paintbrush. You're gonna get a really bad finish if you do try and paint an entire door with a paintbrush. I only used the paintbrush to go around the hinges and on the sides in the difficult to reach sections. And then I took out the roller and I rolled all of the door surface. The thing you need to keep in mind when you're rolling doors is trying not to get any roller lines. If you're new to painting, gloss paint especially is very difficult to try and have no roller lines in and get a really nice finish. So it's really important that when you apply the paint on with the roller, you go back over the section you've already done with what's called a dry roll and make sure you roll out any of those lines where you've got the joins between the sections of the roller. If you've got easy access to a spray gun, you may find it better to have a go at using a spray gun to spray the doors. It's just, if you haven't done a lot of roller work, it's easier to get a nice smooth finish with the spray gun than it is with the roller. Also need to make sure that when you're painting the sides of a door, that you check both sides of a door for any runs, because by pushing the pressure of the paintbrush down on the side, you are going to get some runs that spill over onto both sides of the door, and you don't wanna leave those runs there as they're going to look terrible. These doors were previously a cream in color and it's amazing how much of a difference it made by just painting all of the doors white. I found that for the wardrobes in the bedrooms, it was easier to just paint the doors while leaving them on the hinges. So I just painted one side of the door, let that dry and then opened the door and painted the other side of the door so that I then had white on both sides of these doors, but I didn't need to remove them off the hinges. Once all the doors had been painted with their two coats, one coat of primer and then one coat of the semi-gloss, it was time to install them back onto their hinges and put the new door hardware on. The new hardware I chose to use was slightly bigger so I needed to drill out a bigger hole with the hole saw and then use the spade bit to drill out a slightly bigger hole on the side. I slid the latch into the side of the door and then applied the door handles on the front and the back making sure they fit snug. Once they were all lined up and in place, it was then time to screw it all together. So I took the screws and just put them in a little bit by hand first and then grabbed a long drill bit and drilled those in. To drill the second side, I needed to hold the door handle down and then I was able to screw the latch up. If you're gonna have a go at painting your home and do all of your window frames, wooden trim and doors, I just want you to be mindful about how long that is going to take. I wanna be realistic here and explain to you how long it did actually take me so you can understand the process involved and not go into it feeling like it's gonna be a really easy job. So for me, I painted this entire house. It's a three bedroom home and it's got kitchen, dining, living space. It also has the laundry and two bathrooms. And to paint this entire house with all of the doors and the window trim, etc., it did take me about a week to do. And that's pretty much working full time painting all of those trim. So I painted three coats of paint and one coat of the primer, and it did take quite a long time. 
I could have done it in a different way that was going to be a little bit more time conducive, but for me, I actually really enjoy painting and the process of painting, so it didn't feel very laborious to me. But just be mindful of the fact that it is going to take you quite a long time if you're going to tackle doing this in your whole home. And I don't want you to go into it having expectations that it's going to be a really quick and easy job because that it is not going to be. So if you are going to have a go at this and try and paint all of your trim, I highly recommend it. It does make such a big difference to your home, but just be aware of how long it is going to take you and take your time and actually try and enjoy the process. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can come back and see the next video in this home transformation.